Hi there, welcome to this week's uh, Master Copy. So here I am up in the studio um, and uh, you can see my reference for this week. So this is uh, an artist who I discovered on Pinterest, Alexandra Louis Jacob. I guess, I don't know if that's the right pronunciation. Um, anyway, I really liked his work and um, as we are doing this week, we are looking at master copies. And I was particularly keen on uh, the way he handles trees. So I was keen to, um, it's a bit of a challenge doing a tree like this when it's sort of more sort of spindly without the foliage on. So that's really what I wanted to have a go at. Um, other things I really liked about his work generally was his use of sort of muted tones. And uh, all of his paintings are infused with this very sort of um, air of, uh, or what I put calm, serene, um, which I really like. And I, I, I like muted colours anyway, so I thought he'd be a nice one to have a look at. And an artist I hadn't really looked at a great deal before. So I had a good look at it this morning before going up to my studio. And uh, this was, um, that's why I made a quick charcoal sketch um, to get my drawing in, because um, I decided to not put a base colour in and just go straight in with my greys. So um, the palette that I used was a sort of simplified palette of, um, I think that's rose, which is a bit like alizarin crimson as my red, um, viridian. So viridian and rose or crimson uh, make a very nice grey. So that's really what the base sort of my two main colours were. Um, I also put a bit of ultramarine blue and a touch of burnt umber for some of the more sort of um, the warmer notes in the house. And here what I'm doing is, as you can see, I put in a charcoal drawing, um, fixed that. And then this is a bit of an unusual technique, but I just sort of um, basically blocking in over the top of the charcoal. And what happens is, um, it's if you get the consistency right it's just enough to be able to see the drawing underneath so it's still worth doing um, but you have to get the, the consistency right basically so i'm putting in these greys now in my uh, discussion at the beginning of the week about doing master copies i made several suggestions um, one of them was uh, to try and see the original painting and the other one was not to use a tablet um, and unfortunately uh, due to circumstances I wasn't able to do either of those things today and um, I think you might see from the end um, I sort of paid the price for it somewhat okay so once I'd finished the painting got it back I think some of my values um, could have been better and also some of my color choices but you know this is this is why we're doing these things is to learn um, and I do feel I did learn a lot as, a, as I was pleased with the outcome in the end so it was definitely I enjoyed doing it um, but what happened here is um, uh, yeah apologies about that I had various troubles with the glare um, on the oil paint so I've made several adjustments so yeah, so what I um, where I think I perhaps went a bit wrong with this painting is I was perceiving lots of subtle variations in that grey, but as is often the case, I you you see a variation. So for example, it gets slightly bluer and slightly darker as it comes down towards the horizon where the trees are, and it's a little bit yellower at the top. So I think what happened is I probably overstated some of those um, variations of colour. But uh, that's, you know, that's the, the journey of learning to paint, I guess. Um, so no next time. So what I might have, if I was to do it again, I might just mix up one grey for that sky, paint it all using that one tone, and then just sort of subtly put the variation in over the top. Um, but uh, there we go. So yeah, this is where having the little charcoal sketch of the the little sort of farmhouse there helped. 
and we're just sort of blocking it in. So one of my suggestions was um, when you're doing a master copy, try to take on one that's um, not too visually complex. So this is a great example. This is almost like um, sort of Zen, sort of Chinese um, watercolors, small figure, snow, trees, a very simple composition, but full of atmosphere. Um, so I really like this, these sorts of arrangements. Um, and I'm working on a square canvas, and I think the original was just slightly, um, had slightly more width than height, so that's perhaps not ideal. And there were some other aspects of it which I felt um, I still haven't quite, uh, perhaps, I think maybe this painting would probably have been done um, over a longer period. Obviously I'm doing it as a demo here, so I I'm painting it all in one go, but there's something about the uh, the way the sky is applied and the paint generally um, is it's a bit like Seago's work is that you can just sense that the paint is quite thick and it's it reveals some of the texture of the canvas. OK, and in my enthusiasm to cover the canvas, I perhaps lost a little bit of that texture. Um, so those are some subtleties. And here I'm putting in the, uh, the dark tones of this, um, this little house. So they, that has to be just a, a touch darker than the tree, the line of trees behind it, and that helps bring that forward. So as I say, I never heard of um, Alexander Louis Jacob before. Um, he's perhaps a lesser known impressionist. Um, but I say this is the great thing these days about things like Pinterest, is it, if you like something, it will suggest artists. Um, so I'll put a link below, but I would, um, I'd look him up on Pinterest, is a particularly good way, and uh, have a look at some of his paintings and um, and who knows, it might actually, it will generate suggestions of other artists if you like this sort of composition. I know some people prefer their work perhaps to have a little bit more colour in, but they say there's that little sun, a little touch of orange, so you've almost got a blue-orange sort of complementary arrangement here. And uh, it's just got this very quiet atmosphere that you get in the snow, which I like. So this is definitely, this is the last of my bigger canvases now. So I'm going to have to either buy some new ones or paint over some old ones. So I dare say I'll be up at the studio again this week and do a bit of gessoing at some point. The other thing here, I can sort of looking at it, I can see that I, I'm, I got these... I think overall I just got the values just a little bit darker. Um, it's what I would call a high key painting. So even the darkest darks are more like mid values than proper rich blacks. Um, and I think again we might all have tendencies there and it will be affected by the lighting conditions in the studio. Um, so the more light you have on your painting, you, the tendency is to paint it a bit darker. Um, and I think looking at some of his work, I don't know whether this is somewhere where he lived, but I think you can see lots of repeating motifs. Um, and I think that's a little sort of jetty there um, by a river. And uh, that, that sort of theme appears throughout his work. So um, it was obviously something that um, fascinated him. And I would be amazed if uh, Edward Seago wasn't familiar, at least, with, um, with his work. Because again, you can see lots of similarities. So there I was using a bit of palette knife and this was my, I was trying to really get this thickness of paint. Um, 
one of the books I have on landscape painting actually makes the suggestion of if you really want thick oil paint, one, you can um, squeeze some out on some cardboard and uh, if you let it sort of um, sit for 20 minutes or so, a lot of the oil will come out and you will have it an even sort of um, denser sort of pigment to work with. So I'm just locating the sun there. And this is really clever how he's done the sun. So it's not really, I mean, it's a ever so slight tonal variation. It might just show up um, in black and white, but it's really, it's more about colour than anything. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if tonally it's, it's the sun is very close to the sky, um, but it's just the colour variation that makes it stand out and act like a focal point, really. I think I could have even gone a little bit bigger, so it might be the effect of doing that Peter Wilman painting is sort of nudge, tending for the sun to be a little bit of a smaller dot. So I'm using a bigger brush there, and what, that's a sort of almost like a blending brush. And I think if anything, I'm just trying to sort of calm down some of the glare that was um, on the canvas. That's why I think I changed the um, changed the camera angle slightly there. And these were some little reeds down at the bottom. Again, giving a nice, um, the reeds just sort of almost flick up and uh, give a nice sort of energy to the composition. So for those of you that have been doing my, um, the compositional sort of series, you can see um, more so in his than mine, uh, my drawing, I got, um, again, being a bit critical of my own work here, but I got the, um, the snow and the tree mass all perhaps a little bit higher um, than he m might have done there. But you can see the L shape composition there. So the tree really giving the vertical and then that sort of cuts across with that little highlight on the ground there. And this I thought worked really nicely, which was picking up a little bit of that pink, almost like salmon-y pink colour on the top of the snow. And I thought that was really nice. And a nice sort of impressionist technique there where you're not really relying so much on tonal variation, um, light and dark, as opposed to colour variation. So in the snow, it's more like, let's well, say we're using um, warm and cool to create the feeling of light. And quite a lot of his subjects reminded me a bit of the Stour um, out near, um, where is it, Flatford and round there. There's lots of river scenes. and uh, So um, if I get the chance, as I say, I'm going to have a, uh, a little break next week. But um, I, depending on what happens with this lockdown, I might try and go out that way and ga gather some reference material to apply um, this. It may not be this scene, obviously, without the snow, it's not going to be quite so easy to apply. Um, but the tree in particular, I, I love that effect. The reason I perhaps avoid trees um, like that is because you have to basically paint the tree on top of the sky. Um, which, as I said, isn't how I prefer to paint. Um, and so this is what I wanted to challenge myself. Also, trying to paint it in a way that's um, 
has got a, a sort of good sense of drawing about it and by that I mean that the proportion of the trunk is right and this subtle sort of zigzag of the tree um, works. So it'd be interesting to try and apply this and perhaps tackle some more complex sort of tree forms out there. I'm sure he's simplified it a lot though. You have to assume that whatever whatever the scene was, it's unlikely that it would have presented itself exactly like this. So I used a palette knife to put that little highlight on the ground and I was very quickly conscious that I perhaps slightly overstated it. So I did a lot of work here just to knock that back and quieten it down. Certainly if you go out on um, early mornings and get those misty, misty mornings, you can get effects like this. I think these greys um, uh, are very sort of atmospheric and worth sort of seeking out actually. But the trick is, is not just to, there's a sort of a richness in the greys, which, um, you know, it's not just a case of black and white. It's trying to find all these sort of subtle colour variations within the grey that makes it makes for interest. So making sure that, that edge is nice and soft, um, helping it to recede against a slightly harder edge of the, the tree. So I think lighting is one of the areas I might have to try and work on in my studio. Um, it's a bit of a work in progress, this studio, in terms of how I arrange everything. And it's been working for me all right this week, but um, I could do with better lighting, I think. It's not so much lighting the work. I think for filming in particular, uh, this glare at the top of the canvas doesn't help. So I apologise, it's not the best, um, the best arrangement, but again, that's something else to work on. You'll see, I've um, when you see the finished painting at the end, you'll also see that um, the picture here is quite desaturated. There's quite a bit more colour in, in my version, more so than his, I think. Um, Other little things I can see now, um, and uh, I mean it's not a bad thing. You you should critique your work if you if you want to learn from it. You need to sort of try and um, find out how it could be improved. The um, the house is a bit tall, I think, and that's not quite as pleasing. It doesn't sort of sit on the ground quite as happily as if it had a little bit less height to it. So here we are, getting that tree in. So not black, it's, it's a darkish, um, almost a sort of greeny grey there. And uh, trying to get this slight zigzaggy effect, I may try, I'm particularly interested in getting this taper so that it doesn't get too thick at the top, like there. So that has to be adjusted, I think. And painting a tree like this is one of these things that really um, you, you need to practice. And again, it helps to practice from observation. But certainly looking at artists um, and how they do trees, as I say, that is, is useful. 
you can see I'm trying to get there's a slight lean in it, a slight, and that zigzaggy effect makes for a much more naturalistic feel than a tree that goes straight up. And as it happened, the, the paint did go on to the, um, the background quite well, actually. So um, I think I might have used a little bit of medium, a little bit of linseed oil and uh, managed to get it to stick on. And of course, because I don't want the tree to be like dense, densely dark, the fact that it picks up a little bit in the background um, isn't a problem, like with these trees here. So they're picking up some of that background color and that'll be lightening them, but that's not a problem. And I say with these trees, um, I'm painting into sort of wet paint, but uh, I think looking at them, they, they almost have more the quality of dry brush. Um, so again, either he painted his background um, a bit thinner than I've done there, or um, he might have let the painting dry. That's always a possibility. And it just makes you aware of the fact there are lots of artists um, who perhaps sit just slightly below the top tier of artists who we think of, like famous artists, um, who produced amazing work. You know, it, it's, uh, it's really only the top, you know, 0.1% that are sort of household names, whereas this chap was had never heard of him, but yet this is a, I really like this painting. And there's a little figure. Again, really nice um, to give a sense of scale there. So it looks like he's perhaps out to cut some wood or something like that. Um, just adds a bit of life to the scene. But also makes the, the tree by comparison, you've got large versus small there, so. So just darkening those foreground bushes slightly and putting that jetty in. So again, darkening those just helps to um, push the tree mass back a bit in comparison. Um, as the darks recede and there's more air between you and the darks, um, they lighten slightly. So it's, it's a nice uh, contrast in this painting between large spaces, um, almost empty spaces, um, flat masses, and then some very small little details that help to give the whole thing some scale. So that's another um, aspect I enjoyed of this. That contrast between large and small. So again, because I'm trying to find the sort of echoes of the colour of the sun um, underneath it, just to give you that feeling of that light being picked up there. Okay. 
Again, the details are like icing on the cake, really. Just little touches that help bring it to life. Um, the tree also um, is darker at the base near the figure. And as it goes up, as I say, it goes up, it gets thinner. And as it gets thinner, it also becomes lighter. So just a few more tweaks here and there. But uh, I think that's about it. Um, I think the, f the camera ran out. I did a little bit more tweaking, um, but coming up, you can see the, uh, the final painting. As I say, the lighting's quite different. Um, uh, I took it home to photograph. As you see, it's a lot bluer than the original. Um, but so I think I learned a lot from it. I really enjoyed painting it. I think it's a great painting. Um, so it was a really enjoyable morning. So here we are. There's the final painting, master copy after Alexandra Louis Jacob. So have a look, find him on uh, Pinterest. And uh, good luck with all your master copies this week. Uh, don't forget to put them on Instagram, hashtag EAC Tutor. Uh, remember to like the video, and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, thanks a lot for watching and uh, I'll see you again next week.